Tonight's speaker, you're about to be very, very amazed. Um, some of you might have seen John Winstead before, and we always say that our, our, our minds are like a computer, and our, our conscious mind programs our, our subconscious mind. Wherever we think about, wherever we program our subconscious mind to be, that's how our body reacts to it, just like a, a pr programming a computer. So we want to be careful what we're, we're thinking about, what we're programming our, our subconscious mind. And John will prove to you just how powerful that is. And the, the body reacts to whatever you tell it. and only knows what you program into it, just like a computer programmer only knows, computer only knows what is put into it. So um, that's what we're going to actually physically see tonight and uh, how the body reacts and, and everything is stored up energy and sometimes that energy isn't, um, it, it's put in different places within the body. You'll, you'll see it all and John will explain it. One thing we want to do is, another thing we do is NLP called Neuro Linguistic Programming. I want you all to point to yourself and say, I am a positive thinker and doer. I am a positive thinker and doer. I am awesome. I am awesome. All right, without further ado, we'll bring on John Winstead. Uh, greetings and welcome. Thanks for coming out tonight. How many people out here are not familiar with the uh, information I'm going to present tonight. Spiritual quantum healing. How many people have never seen me do a presentation before? Oh, okay. Well, uh, what we're going to do tonight, we're going to explore a little bit. We're going to explore outside the uh, medical model that you're familiar with. Uh, pretty much entrenched in what is called Newtonian physics to where they reduce everything down to a molecular structure and then they use drugs and uh, toxic chemicals primarily to force the body into doing something that is unnatural. And they do a great job when it comes to trauma and putting you back together being in a car wreck, but they're a failure when it comes to illness and sickness and degenerative disease. Um, especially around cancer. And the reason is because there's more money in treatment than it is in eliminating illness and sickness. So we're going to go outside of that medical model tonight and we're going to look at the body and health from a different perspective. We're going to look at it from a spiritual perspective and also from a quantum physics perspective. And we're kind of going into that twilight zone. And that twilight zone is where spirituality and quantum physics actually become one. Because in quantum physics, which was pretty much born around the early 1900s, they found that quantum physics, which is the study of the subatomic, they find that quantum physics is stranger than you can imagine. Because the laws that we're accustomed to break down and they don't behave the same way when you get down to the subatomic level. And that subatomic level is that twilight zone where everything that you have been told that we're energy, everything is energetic, everything is energy, but that sounds nice. And you've probably seen the movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? How many people saw that movie? And it talked about, that's where it brought quantum physics out of the closet and kind of gave you an introduction of what quantum physics is and they talked about how we create our reality and they talked about how spirituality is basically quantum physics at that subatomic level and they talk about how we are responsible for what we attract into our lives well at that level we're going to look at it from a health perspective because the body is a community of individual living cells. And every cell has all the systems that you have. Every cell in your body has a reproductive system, has a waste system, has a hormone system. Every part of your outward being, every individual cell has. And what's totally fascinating is that these trillions of cells all work in a community. They have the intelligence to work in a community to where everything is in harmony. And when you look at your physical body from a 
different perspective, it basically is awe. You're in awe is how those individual cells can work in harmony to create muscles and, and the liver and digestive system. Trillions of cells. How do they know how to do that? What is guiding every individual cell to cooperate and work in a harm, harmonious manner? Well, what's fascinating about that is that each individual cell, if you get right down to the molecular structure, is pure consciousness. It's pure consciousness. It's energy. And there we are in that twilight zone to where you break the cell down to the molecular structure and the atomic structure and you get into that area where you become into the spiritual realm. And in the spiritual realm, that's where you are familiar with your concept of what God is. And there's thousands of different religions. And since the beginning of time, man has tried to understand the incompre incomprehensible and make it understandable as to where he can convey it to other people. And one of the areas that I actually became interested in was a book called Conversations with God. How many people has read this book? There's something very interesting in this book, whether you believe the story behind it or not, is irrelevant because there's so much wisdom in this book. And one of the things that grabbed me was the, the statement that there's only two emotions that we operate off of, and that's love and fear. And I think that's so important because what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at different pieces of the puzzle, and we're going to put this puzzle together, and we're going to see how we can apply it to your health in a way that you're probably not familiar with. Because every cell in your body has a consciousness, and therefore you are a subconscious being, or spiritual being, having a human experience. And 95 to 98% of all of your actions is controlled by your unconscious mind. That's how you can walk and talk at the same time. Same way you can drive and talk at the same time. Uh, most everything has been programmed at an earlier age, and the unconscious mind is running the show. So if we look at this thing around love and fear based on what it says in this book, and I'm going to read you a short paragraph. And as I read this paragraph, I want you to imagine and look at your life and look at the world and see how each one of these emotions, which is love and fear, applies to our everyday life and to our politics and to our religion and to the world events. And then we're going to come back to that. And we're going to focus on the fact that since everything is energy, based on the movie that you saw, which is, the, what the bleep do we know? Well, when you saw that movie, it, well, it, it was intriguing, and it was exciting, and it made sense. And then you just kind of left it there and went home. But what we're going to do is we're going to take it out of, the out of the laboratory, we're going to take it out of theory, and we're going to combine it with this, and we're going to demonstrate it. And later on in the presentation, I'm going to ask for a volunteer. And the volunteer I'm looking for is somebody who has uh, been dealing with chronic issues of, of uh, maybe depression or cancer or degenerative disease that the doctors have failed you on. So if you are battling cancer or have had cancer or depression, when I ask for a volunteer, you may be interested. Because what we're going to do is we're going to come and we're going to communicate with that consciousness, that unconscious part of you that knows why you have depression. We're going to communicate with that part of you that knows why you have cancer. We're going to communicate with that part of you that knows why you had to have a hysterectomy. Because that part of you knows why and it also knows how to heal you. And let me start out with this to kind of set the tone. But as I read this, we're going to come back and we're going to focus on this thing called love and we're going to compare it to this thing called fear. Because if you've had major degenerative health problems 
And if there's an unresolved emotional issue from the past, then you're operating off of fear. And what's fascinating is we're going to combine this thing called quantum physics with spirituality. We're going to look at the aspects of both quantum physics and spirituality and see how they blend into one. And then hopefully we can do some healing tonight. In fact, we're going to do a group experiment to where I'm going to ask everybody in the room to participate and hopefully we can uh, do something that hasn't been done before. So we're just, gonna, we're just gonna play and experiment a little bit tonight. Now I'm gonna throw some things out and uh, see if it kinda stimulates your imagination. So let me start out with this. And this paragraph right here, when I read this, kinda stuck in my mind because the whole concept around the Conversations with God book is that in everything is basically love. But yet when you bring it down to the physical level, then you have a duality of love and fear. Because in the world, you don't know what hot is unless you have a reference to what cold is. Tall has no meaning unless you have an experience of what short is. Right is not right unless you have an experience of what left is. So we're going to look at love and fear from that perspective. So let's... Just allow your mind to focus on how the world operates based on what I'm going to read to you. And in the book it says, Every action taken by human beings is based in love or fear. Not simply those dealing with relationships, decisions affecting business, industry, politics, religion, the education of your young, the social agenda of your nations, the economic goals of your society. Choices involving war, peace, attack, defense, aggression, submission. Every single free choice you ever undertake arises out of one of the only two possible thoughts. And that's the thought of love or a thought of fear. Fear is the energy that contracts. It closes down. It draws in. It runs. It hides. It hoards. It harms. Love is the energy which expands. It opens up. It sends out. It stays. It reveals. It shares. And it heals. Have you heard the saying, love heals? Fear wraps our bodies in clothing. Love allows us to stand naked. Fear clings to, clutches all that we have. Love gives all that we have away. Fear holds close. Love holds dear. Fear grasps. Love lets go. Fear rankles. Love soothes. Fear attacks. Love amends. Every human thought, word, or deed is based in one emotion or the other. So look at the world today. Is it operating out of love? Or is it operating out of fear? So when we look at health, we're going to look at it from that perspective also. So if you have cancer and you go to the medical doctor, are you operating now out of love? Or are you operating out of fear? Does he instill love in you? Or does he instill fear in you? When you go for an operation, does he soothe you? Or do you feel the fear? So we're going to look at that. And as I came across that information, it was a piece of the puzzle. And I tell people, over the years, I've kind of been out there panning for gold in the stream of life. And you may go for weeks or months panning, and all of a sudden you get this little golden nugget. And you put this little golden nugget down, and it's a piece of the puzzle. And life's exciting and you never know what you're going to find. But I have been very intrigued in, in researching this area around, around spirituality and around quantum physics because I saw common denominators there. And one of the things that I came across was an article that actually came out in 1938, and it was on the front page of the New York Times. And this medical doctor 
actually saw the future. Unfortunately, over 70 years later, the medical model that you're aware of refuses to acknowledge what he saw because they're locked in to greed and fear based on money. Cancer, for example, is big business. And the reason we don't have a cure for cancer is because corporate America will not allow it. And isn't it more than strange that the FDA's rule is that only a drug, which is a toxin, can prevent, cure, or treat a disease. Disregard the fact that anything out there in nature could do that, but their rule is only a toxic, only a poison can do that. Isn't it more than strange that they treat you with radiation and chemotherapy when you have cancer, and that's the very things that cause cancer? Isn't it more than strange that they actually cause you to leave your common sense behind and put you in fear as soon as you go in and you're diagnosed with cancer? They get you to leave your common sense behind because it's common knowledge that we don't want to get around a nuclear power plant that's leaking radiation. It's common knowledge not to get too many dental x-rays or too many mammograms. It's common knowledge to be afraid of a dirty bomb that spews out radiation because it causes cancer. But once you get cancer, now your common sense goes out the window and you're open to let them radiate you with the very thing that causes cancer. We don't want to have our water polluted with toxins. We're concerned about nitrates in our food. We're concerned about chemicals and paints and all kind of stuff that you read in the news because it causes cancer. But when you go to the doctor and they diagnose you with cancer, your common sense is left aside because now they put some of the most toxic chemicals ever devised into the human body. And one of the side effects of chemotherapy is it causes cancer. More people die from the treatment because what they're doing is they're trying to force the body to do something that is unnatural. I'm going to show you a different approach and let you decide. Their model is based in fear. This model we're going to explore is based in love. And what's fascinating is that I've seen some amazing results when you base it in love. But let me read you this little article that came out in the New York Times. And this was a very prestigious medical doctor who was talking before a, a gathering of surgeons from all over the country. And he had worked with people previous to this who were also experimenting with frequencies and energy. And this guy, his name was Dr. George W. Crowell. And he said, the medical man of the future would tune in on the living body as one does now on an ordinary radio by listening in to the short waves and the long waves transmitted by the various organs, he would hear the symphony played by the living organism, and he would determine the rhythms of the dance of life. Long before there was any outward evidence of disease, the physician radio engineer of the future would thus be enabled to tell by the reception of the life waves, the life waves, whether they were playing a melody of health or whether they were signaling an SOS. This man saw the future, and he knew that the body radiated energy. And in fact, in 1974, Fitz Albert Pops, which is a German research physicist, proved that the individual cells in our body communicate with each other using light, light waves. And that's how the cells communicate. Light waves is a form of electromagnetic radiation. The cells in your body are communicating, sending out energy, light waves, and receiving light waves. That's on a quantum level and that's also down at the spiritual level so unfortunately the medical community as we know it was locked into drugs and surgery because that's where the money's at you can't make money when you're presenting natural herbs there's no money in that you can't patent it so when I saw that I was very intrigued because 
I was wondering, I was experimenting with the electromagnetic devices and was familiar with Royal Rife who was using frequencies to cure cancer and other diseases. And then I came across another nugget. And that nugget was in 1979, there was a company that actually patented the application of using a magnet as a diagnostic tool. Because until I came across that, this article here was just one of those things, well, it sounds good. You know, hopefully somebody will come across a way to do that or they can listen to the body and pick up the life ways and tell whether the body is in a state of illness or where the body is playing a symphony. And lo and behold, this company came out with a way to do that. They actually wrote several books uh, on the effects of magnetic energy on the human body and in the process gained over a hundred different patents. And one of the patents was they found that if you take a magnet, North Pole and South Pole, and you lay a person down on a massage table with their shoes on, and you take this magnet and you place it externally on their body, whether it's on the liver, the lungs, the heart, or whatever, and you pick up their feet, if their leg shortens, then the body is reacting to that magnetic energy. If the legs don't shorten, the body doesn't react to the polarity. They found you can turn that magnet over and put the opposite polarity on the body and check the feet, and if the body did not respond to either polarity, it meant that those cells, that organ, was in a state of harmony. It was signaling a symphony. It was in a state of balance. But if one polarity of the magnet actually created stress in that body part, the, the body would create a, a resistance to that further weakening and literally cause the leg to shorten. So they did so much experiments with it, they actually patented the application. So when I came across that, fortunately, I was able to take a seminar with one of the gentlemen who had actually trained with the people who discovered this. And I bought the magnets, went home and grabbed me some feet anywhere I could, and started practicing. And over a period of years, I was able to evolve this by taking other classes and seminars and continuously panning in that stream of life and getting these nuggets, I was able to evolve this to the point where I didn't need the magnets anymore. The magnets were like training wheels. Once I got up to speed, I didn't need the magnets because I had to evolved it to the point where I could directly communicate with the unconscious. But until then, there, I had no way of knowing how to do that. But this acting as training wheels got me to that point. And as I continued to evolve this, I found from experience and observation that even though the medical community has thousands of names for diseases, Lord knows they can sit down and rattle off names you can't even pronounce. But what's fascinating is that most all of them can be boiled down to four things. And there's a few exceptions. But for the most part, these four things is what goes wrong in your body. And the nice thing about it is I didn't want to become an expert because I looked out in the world and I saw that there's a lot of experts out there. And there's herbalists out there. There's chiropractors. There's nutritionists. There's dietitians. And everyone has been trained in their field and they're an expert. If you go to an herbalist, he's not going to adjust you back. He's going to talk about herbs. If you go to a nutritionist, he's not going to talk to you about herbs specifically. He's going to talk to you about nutrition. A chiropractor is going to work with you back. But what I noticed is that it doesn't work for everybody. Why is it that some people get results with an herbalist, some people don't? It's like they have to keep going to different experts to find out the one that works. So as I evolved and looked at this, I thought, well, why not go to the ultimate expert? The ultimate expert is you. Nobody knows your body better than you do. Everybody is different, meaning that everybody has 
different experiences in life. Everybody has a different program in their unconscious mind. And if you look out, and you've probably seen books, there's a number of books to where they talk about the majority of health problems is caused by mental stress. And then you look out and you see there's another expert says, no, the majority of health problems is caused by what you eat. Well, and you look out and you see, no, a lot of the health problems is caused by problems with your back. Everybody, if you look out in the news, everybody is telling you that illness is caused by this, illness is caused by that, depending on who you talk to. Well, you can get really confused because you don't know who to believe. But what's fascinating is if we go directly to you and ask you, your body knows what's going on. And what I discovered is that if you've got cancer, if you've got diabetes, if you've got fibromyalgia, if you've got lupus, whatever these fancy names are, you can boil it down to one of these four. The first one is the body is malnourished. If the body is malnourished, you know, it's like you're burning kerosene in your car. You're going to sputter and knock and smoke, and you, the body is going to get weak. It can't function properly unless it's properly nourished. Well, the second thing, which goes hand in hand with the first, is the body becomes toxic. If you can't eliminate the waste properly, the body holds toxins, and the toxins poison the body, poisons the cells. You can also have environmental toxins. You can also be exposed to paints and chemicals and stuff that affect the cells that also make you toxic. The third one is you can have structural misalignment in the back to where you've got neck pain, shoulder pain, hip pain, and that interferes with the nerve energy. And the fourth one, which is a biggie, is that you can have unresolved emotional issues from your past that is creating stress in your body. And if you ask the body what, which one of these, or in a lot of cases it can be all four, but you ask the body, what is the priority? And the body will tell you. And there's nobody out there that knows your body like you do. Your unconscious mind knows what's going on. It knows why you have back problems. It knows why your immune system got suppressed and you developed cancer. If you ask the medical community, they don't have a clue why you got cancer. You know, they can, they, can, they can guess and say, well, maybe you ate the wrong kind of foods, or we just don't know. But they have a one-size-fits-all approach to treating it, and it's like an assembly line. The only approach they have is radiation, chemotherapy, and, and surgery. And isn't it more than strange that that's all they have when it comes to most everything else? Drugs and surgery. Thank goodness for the surgery because if you're in a wreck or a shot, they can put you back together. But if you've got illnesses, and if you've got sickness, then drugs and surgery is the only thing they've got. So what they're doing, they're stuck in Newtonian physics. They're trying to force the body to do something that it's not naturally designed to do. They put you on blood pressure medication for the rest of your life to force the body to lower the blood pressure. And all the drugs have side effects. It's not like they went into the laboratory and they found a miracle drug that lowers blood pressure, and that's all it does. What they did is they found a poison that one of the side effects out of the long list of the side effects is it lowers blood pressure. Or it has this effect. But when you read the pamphlets that come with it, look at all the other side effects. It's like this one I saw on TV, they were advertising Veramist and for your seasonal allergies. And the woman was running happily. You probably saw that. You know, she's happy, smiling, and gay. And you didn't even really focus on the side effects because the side effects that cause nasal sores, uh, nosebleeds, cataracts can occur, and glaucoma. So you can easily get rid of your runny nose while you go blind. <laughs> And that company makes millions of dollars because people just, their common sense just goes right out the window. Same way with cancer. I mean, I can tell you horror stories after horror stories about the, the deadly effects of uh, cancer. And cancer has been one of my big passions because I saw relatives die early on. And I wanted to know, what is this thing called cancer? And why is it that they're poisoning my, my first cousin 
with radiation and chemotherapy. And isn't that the same thing that causes cancer? Why are they doing that? Why is he suffering a horrible death? So I did some research, and I can do, do a whole seminar on that, but we won't go there. What I want to share with you tonight is getting back to the spirituality and the quantum physics aspect is that, like I said, if we can communicate with your unconscious mind, your body will tell us what it needs. It'll tell us if it's malnourished. It'll tell us if there's structural misalignment in the back. And most back pain, shoulder pain, hip pain, if you've got shoulder pain and neck pain or back problems, so far I've always found an unresolved emotional issue. And there's, uh, I've uploaded videos from uh, 2020 to where they actually validated that, to where one medical doctor was getting 90% success rate with his patients, and they had tried everything. They'd been to chiropractors, therapy, and all this, and all he was doing was testing them to make sure they didn't have a physical injury and taking them into a room and giving them a two-hour seminar. And they were getting a 90% success rate of eliminating their pain. So you say, well, how is it? He just talks to them, and they've tried everything else, but yet they're eliminating their pain. Because what he discovered is that most people who have back pain, and he was showing that, yes, that there are people out there who have bulging discs, degenerative disease, that don't have back pain. And there's people out there who have a perfectly normal back that have excruciating back pain. What he found is that the unconscious mind is trying to do you a favor by creating the back pain to distract you from dealing with an unresolved emotional issue. And early on, he found out that was anger and rage. Since then, he has discovered and written several more books to include other emotions that also are around that. Well, in my research, I've gotten people out of back pain doing the same thing, just asking their unconscious mind what vertebrae is out and what is, is there an unresolved emotional there and what is the unresolved emotion. And the fascinating thing is that once we determine what the unresolved emotion is, the body will tell us how stressful it is to your overall well-being based on imaginary scale. It will actually give us a number. And it will also take us back to the age of cause where this actually got planted and in most cases, it goes back to childhood. And it'll also tell us how it wants to heal. And what I've discovered is that the unconscious is like that little child. And if you look at it from this perspective, if you've got a child that's outside playing in the yard, you love that little child. And it's okay for that little child to play. But if you look out the window and you see that little child is out there, it's fell and it's hurt and it's crying, you don't grab a stick and go out there and try and beat that little child into submission to make it stop crying. You go out there based on love in your heart and compassion and try and find out why is that little child crying? What, is, what has happened that it's hurting and how can I help? The medical community uses a stick. What I found works best is love. And that's what we're going to demonstrate tonight. So how do we do that? Well, we do that the same way that they did it. They used a patented diagnostic application to where they were using the leg links. And that's what I do. I sit you down in a chair and three stools up here. And you just drape your feet over the stool, or if you've got a recliner, you raise the recliner up, and I just gently, with your shoes on, I don't work with bare feet. <laughs> you just keep your shoes on, and you put them, I put them together, and I just gently hold them. And I start talking to your unconscious mind, just like I'm talking to you. But over the years, I have developed a connection, a communication link, a trust, whatever you call it. I don't really understand it, because the way it evolved, but the unconscious always responds and it always answers my questions. It can't verbalize and talk to me like I'm talking to you, but it can give me a signal. And that signal is, it'll shorten one leg. It's like a yes or no, yes and no, yes and no. And based on a yes and no response, I can formulate the questions around that. I can ask, can we uh, find out why this person has cancer? And if the leg shorten, 
then we can ask, is it because there's vitamin mineral deficiency there? Is it because the body is toxic? Is it structural misalignment interfering with nerve energy? Or is it an unresolved emotional issue? And I can tell you from experience that every person I've tested who's had cancer, there's always an unresolved emotional issue there. If you read the book by Louise Hay, uh, You Can Heal Your Life, she healed her life because she released an unresolved emotional issue. She's got a whole book. She's got whole seminars teaching how to overcome cancer based on love and releasing negative emotions. Well, I found that there's a combination of things. Is that if the body is under stress, and it's all stress, vitamin mineral deficiency creates stress, toxicity creates stress, structural misalignment creates stress, unresolved emotional issues create stress, and there's your common denominator. If anybody ever asks you what causes cancer, you can tell them. And the cause of cancer is a compromised immune system. Now, you have cancer cells in your body every day. And what keeps you from developing tumors is your immune system. There's no doctor out there that can heal your body, and there's no drug in the drugstore that can heal your body. Only your body has the wisdom and intelligence. It knows how to heal cancer. It knows how to keep you well. It knows how to eliminate the flu, how to eliminate the colds, how to eliminate viral bacterial infection. It's doing it all the time. But something has to create a stress, or f stress factor in your body to where the immune system can't recognize the cancer and it can't deal with it and the cancer continues to grow. And what's, what's sad is, is the fact that if you, if you notice a tumor and you go to the doctor, the doctor immediately tries to put you in fear and scares you and tells you that we've got to do something right now. We need to put you on chemotherapy. We need to start you on chemotherapy as soon as possible. We've got to radiate it. We've got to shrink that tumor. But what's fascinating is that tumor has been with you for a long time. It takes about eight years for a tumor to present itself. And I can back everything I'm telling you up with videos. I've got videos uploaded on the Internet just waiting for somebody to ask me <laughs> so I can share it with them. And in fact, I've got some uh, handouts here that at the end of the, the seminar, if you're interested, and I know not everybody is interested because I've been down this road before, but on the back of this, uh, these handouts are video links. And these video links are life-saving videos, literally life-saving videos. So if you don't get anything out of this seminar tonight, if you take one of these handouts and pull it up on your computer and watch these videos, I guarantee you, if you watch this one called Cancer, Healing from the Inside Out, you will know more about the cause, prevention, and cure of cancer than the doctors down here who treat it. Guarantee, hands down. Because they don't even know this because they're not trained in this. They're, they're forbidden. They cannot go outside the medical model and tell you about anything natural because one, their malpractice insurance won't cover it. Second, it's against the law. They can be fined and go to jail. And third, they own a very short lease and the FDA would come down on them like a sledgehammer because the, the medical system is controlled at a higher level. It's all about the money and we don't know about it because we've been so led down this road. But you, first thing you have to do in order to overcome a major illness like cancer is you have to take responsibility for your health. You can't just go out and just put your health in somebody's expertise and think that they have your best interest in mind and they're going to heal you. You have to take responsibility for what you have attracted. And second, you have to educate yourself. Because what, in this case, what you don't know literally can kill you. But the more you know, and I tell people the cure for cancer is education. Once you understand how the system is set up, how the system works, how your body works, and how to overcome what you have been doing that created the cancer, your chances of healing are great. But unless you do that, you go down the same path that most everybody else does. And the statistics are horrible. So what I do with people, I don't treat cancer, have no medical training, I'm not a doctor, do not diagnose, nor do I prescribe anything. 
I work with energy. I work with spiritual uh, energy. And I allow you to see what your body has to say. I'm not the expert, but you are. And I tell people, I'm the messenger. I'm like an interpreter. I can communicate with that part of you and let that part of you reveal what's going on inside your body. And I can guide you towards healing. But you're the actual healer. You have all the resources within you right now to heal your body. You're the expert. So, that's what we're going to do tonight, is I'm going to ask for a volunteer, and I hope that somebody out there is, is uh, willing to, to play. And We're actually going to take a five-minute break. The best part is coming up now, but it's going to be even better, because we have a projector. Okay. We'll be actually see... The, uh, he's talking about the leg length changing, but well, we have a, a screen, a projector, so you can actually sit in your seat and actually see that. So um, um, we are filming this tonight, so uh, just keep that in mind if you, wanna, if you want to volunteer that you'll be on camera and all that, just to, to FYI. So we'll take like a, a quick five minute break, set that up. Okay. All right, take it away. Okay, now it's for the fun part. <laughs> And I've got, a, uh, got two volunteers already. So we're going to start with, I'm sorry, Teresa. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you'll if you're tell everybody what, uh, what kind of 